thank you thank you my dear lord thank you thank you thank you my lord thank you thank you thank you thank you my dear lord thank you thank you thank you my lord thank you thank you thank you thank you my dear lord oh thank you thank you thank you my lord thank you thank you thank you thank you my dear lord thank you thank you thank you thank you my lord thank you thank you thank you thank you my dear lord thank you thank you thank you thank you my lord thank you thank you thank you thank you my dear lord oh thank you thank you thank you my lord thank you thank you thank you and join me to sing thank you to jesus type it out on your screen let the whole world join us to say thank you to our king of kings our lord of lords our benefactor our savior our protector our provider thank you thank you thank you my lord thank you thank you thank you thank you my dear lord thank you thank you thank you thank you my lord thank you thank you thank you thank you my dear lord because you have thanked him he will bless you everyone connected to this live broadcast today everyone that will watch now and watch later the glory of god will change your story no matter how high you have been you will go higher and no matter how low you are the lord will bring you up if you are sick get ready to be healed if you are down get ready to be lifted if you are barren get ready to be fruitful those areas of concerns of burden of anxiety of fear around you in you shall be addressed they shall all become testimonies you will have new testimonies today's encounter will make a difference in your life god will impart heavily with his presence and his anointing on you in jesus name type amen 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 at three levels the lord bless you welcome 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 to ask a question brokers live brokers thank you for joining this early please share 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 everybody keep sharing keep sharing go to your share button keep sharing like make comment and share let more people join us let's drive a high traffic let everyone connected to you be connected to this platform this is a platform of interaction it's not a preaching session it's not homiletical preaching it is engagement it is discussing live issues life is made up of real issues people are passing through issues in life and there are no issues without solution here we use biblical experiential true to life applicable to life counsel and answers and guidance and mentoring it is also a mountain of prayer god answers our prayers here so type in your prayer request in all areas of life ask questions present your situations there is no situation you don't have a special problem there is nothing you are passing through that somebody else had not passed through successfully and moved to a higher height the lord will bless you the lord will use the question you are asking to bless other people whatever question whatever need whatever situations you are not the only one there so when you ask a question you are asking it on behalf of hundreds of thousands even millions and when we give answer when we give counsel when we give clarification when we give direction when we give mentoring it is also for hundreds of thousands if not millions for that sake don't suffer in silence don't suffer alone don't cry alone don't shed tears alone don't commit suicide don't go into depression don't say i'm finished i can't do it no let's lighten your body 
A problem shared is a problem halved. And by God's grace, he has anointed me, trained me, and positioned me to bring guidance, to bring counsel, to bring clarification, to give mentoring, and to pray. Share, 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 share. And if today is your first day of watching this live broadcast, if today is your first day of connecting to Ask a Question Broadcast by Femi Emmanuel, say so. Type your name and say, I'm a first timer here. I'm watching for the first time. And let Tony Point Global Family and Living Spring Global Family welcome such people. Type your name, your city, your location, and your country. This is a global family. 198 nations on earth connect to Turning Point family. So when you type your name, your city, your country, uh, it, it, it helps us to understand that we are indeed a global family. God bless you. I can see Elizabeth Mujishola Ogunto-Sin. I am a first-timer. Bridget, Anna, Bakam, why Bakam? I'm a first-timer. Yes, yes, Mujishola. Okay, he's saying all first-timers, you're welcome. Please, could you type their name to them? Let them make it personal, make it intentional. Let them feel loved. Let them feel connected. All of you, please be knowing that. All first-timers be indicating. God bless you. I can see a novero from Dawaki, Abuja. Your name, the city, and the country where you are joining us from. Your name, the city, and the country. Omorigi, Abraham, first time from Benin City. God bless you from Benin City. Ola Tejo, go share here for me, Badon. You are all, there are regulars. There are regulars on this broadcast. God bless you. All those of you that are regulars, consistent joiners. Everybody be consistent. When it comes to God, consistency is key. Isabel Dube. On YouTube, Ontario, Canada, you are also a regular. Juliet Joseph, you are also a regular. Everyone, please be welcoming first timers and let us know. Banjoko Damilola Suri, United Kingdom. God bless you. Fumila you are Degoke. Uh, from where? Okay, Fumila you are Degoke. First timer joining us. God bless you from Nigeria. Be welcoming them. Be welcoming them. God bless you. I desire to Siaka from Abuja. God bless you. Bolanle Akintola from London. Ola Dimeji Awolola. God bless you. Oji Okoye from Kutodun. Ooh, Kuton, God bless you. All right, everybody. Let's have you. Let me see you. Let me see your face and I will bless you. God bless you, Johanna Oguche. My name is Ruth Oguche from Nasarawa, Nigeria. Please welcome them. You are welcome. You are welcome. Type your name, the city and the country. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay. We are welcome ourselves enough. Olufemi Adeboye. Okay. Uh, Goshe night. God bless you. Okay. Let's hit the ground running. Please make your own contributions on issues being discussed. Make your contributions. If you have experience in that area, if you have a word to drop, we are all learning. I don't have the monopoly of knowledge. I don't have the monopoly of anointing. Uh, you too will be a blessing to somebody leading you when you make your contributions. Emmanuel Abuola from Columbus, USA, Ohio. That's on YouTube. God bless you. So many people are joining. Rita Bisong from Calabar. God bless you. Edwin Ubiora from Akure City. God bless you. You are welcome. Yusuf Sabitu. Well done, sir. All right. You are welcome. Let's hear the grand running. Ebolua Olua Tosin. Join us. God bless you. That's on Instagram. Alayo official join us from United Kingdom. Share, share, share. Everybody keep sharing. I want us to be in thousands, thousands. Make your comments and share, 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 share. 
God bless you. Igwa Igalo, Isoke Igalo. I look like a bini name. God bless you. Okay. Daddy, we are starting now. Please make your contributions. And if what I have answered resonates with you, confirm. I say, Daddy, that's right. You said it all. That's the truth. And if you have addition, put it there. Daddy, what is your take on miracle money? Is there anything like that? Miracle money? No. There is no miracle money. That somebody can conjure money. I see it also on social media. There is, there is nothing. It's not provable. What we have is God favoring us with money. God blessing people to bless us. God blessing the work of our hand. God causing people to remember us and reaching out to us financially. God giving your, your favor, your matter. God causing you to have high patronage. Different ways by which God blesses us with money, promotion, windfall, different ways. But that miracle money will just come to your hand miraculously. That's magic. There is nothing like miracle money in that sense. If you talk about miracle blessing, miracle money, we are saying God blessing the work of your hand. God putting you in the mind of people to bless you. God introducing you. God causing your business to sell. And God causing multiplication in different ways. God has 1,001 ways to bless us financially. But not magical money. Not money just surface. No root. No. But I see a lot of that going on. I am not here to criticize any pastor. But you should know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. Please make your contributions. Have you ever received miracle money? You just hold your hand and money dropping. Right? You just carry your bag and it's filled with dollars, with pounds sterling, with naira. Have you also experienced that? Let us know. Daddy, is it okay for a single lady to marry a married man? Somebody, Odua Yodubi, said, I need the commission's account number. Odua Yodubi, send a chat message, a WhatsApp message of please send me the commission's account number to plus two three four eight zero nine seven eight nine four thousand. We don't announce the commission's account on air because we are not here essentially for raising money. But those who want to be partners, those who want to tithe, those who want to sow seed, those who believe that the kingdom of God must enlarge and they want to be a part of it, you will have to personally make a request. Or please send me the commission's account, PayPal, or the local account. Send that to plus two three four eight zero nine seven eight nine four. That's okay. So send a chat message. Or please register me to that number. Uh, or, or please send me the commission's account number to that number. And it will be sent to you personally. And serve your God personally. Your father that sees you in secret will reward you openly. Is it okay for a single lady to marry a married man? Now, these are counsels that are not possible to give online like this. Because you need to know the situation surrounding this question. Ordinarily, why should a single lady marry a married man? Is that man not married? Is the wife not alive? Even if they have separated, what is this? Uh, issues surrounding it so it is not something we can just say online each issue have to be treated on his own merit but ordinarily a single lady to marry a married man and the question here is is it okay for a single lady to marry a married man the answer is no a married man has his wife you don't go to destroy another man another woman's home just like you not want any other person to also destroy your home when you have one. So the answer is no. Daddy, what is your take on pastors praying for Yahoo boys? Tutu Ademolu say, well said, sir. No, never. It's good to know the source of the money. 
Please watch out. Yes. It's good to know the source of the money so that you are not under magical spell. Don't be under magical spell. All right. That I'm on this to you. I agree with you, sir. There is no miracle money unless rituals. <laughs> you know, I keep saying that all this using money, using people to make money, money ritual is a lie. Human beings don't become money. So those who say that the witch doctors that ask people to bring human beings to make money for them, they are telling lies. They also know it's a lie. And uh, more often than not, those who go looking for human beings, for witch doctors to make money for them, they end up in the tiger's belly. When their antics are about to be known, sometimes they take the life of the person who will uh, call them out for people. So there is nothing like <clears throat> human being becoming money. Satan is just wasting life. It's a deception, uh, ritual killing to make money or miracle money. One pastor will pray and your back will swell up with money. It's all lies. It's all, it's all, it's all uh, deception. Okay, many people are already asking questions. Please ask your question. Joseph Balogo is not good. That's about marriage. Okay? Daddy, what is your take on pastors praying for Yahoo boys? What kind of pastors are those ones? There are pastors that bring pastor into disrepute. Praying for Yahoo boys. If I understand Yahoo boys, those are fraudulent boys. Those are stealing boys. Those are criminals. How should a pastor be praying for criminals? Those who defraud people of their money by lies, internet fraudsters. No. That even that pastor who knew that they are fraudsters and was praying for them is also a fraudster. Say 419 pastor. And there are many of them. Daddy, how can I help a husband who feels insecure? Is always scared anytime he sees his wife talking to talking with an, another anyone of the opposite sex, even if the man is her boss. <laughs> we been, we are here tonight again with the husband wife issue. How can I help a husband who feels insecure? Is always scared anytime he sees his wife talking with anyone of the opposite sex even if the man is her boss. Wow. These are real issues of life. These are real issues of life. There are husbands that are not secured. And I have said again and again, if you don't have liver, don't marry a beautiful woman. Don't marry corporate women. You see, when women or anybody, when they go up in their career they begin to relate at a level management meeting traveling conferences phone calls they have to answer issues many people they are responsible for the life and work of many people so i think a husband should celebrate his wife who is rising up in her career or in her calling a husband should be should feel secure so all husbands be secured and most of the times, these women are the breadwinners, helping the home. And if you help your wife to go up, it will take up the name of the family. Is the blessing is for for the for the good of both of you. So, how do you help such a man? Well, cancer, as we are saying now, please feel secure, feel secure. And women, please, even before marriage. You will know a, a man that is not secure, even when you are cautious and avoid such a man. I have seen men who kill their wives, who maim their wives, who injure them, all because it's not secure. Who is calling you? Who is that man? Who are you greeting? Who is that one calling at night? Which meeting? Why are you this late? Why travel? I mean, it's just not secure. It's an affliction. It's an affliction. Such men needs help and of course sometimes too women too are not secured 
excessive jealousy. It's okay to be jealous. It's okay to want to own your man or your woman. But when it becomes excessive, when it gets to the point of, of wanting to do silly things, no, that is no longer godly. That is flesh. That is carnal. That is evil. So please feel secure in your marriage. Let your wife rise and fulfill her calling. Let your husband also rise. We should support each other to rise and celebrate each other as we get promoted in life. That's my own answer. Uh, Lord is absolutely correct, sir. I be all doing so well done, sir. More blessing. The man needs to be counseled and helped. Two, two. This problem, this is problem before marriage. You need to include him always now for peace to reign and for your safety. Yes. I have seen men who injured and also, in fact, killed their woman because of excessive jealousy. Yes, sir. Many of them take pastor uh, out there by their fruit. You shall know them, okay? Yeah, please don't put your number on the screen. Don't put your number on the screen if anybody is doing that. Because there are internet froster that will take that number and begin to talk to you as if we are the one talking to you. Don't put your number on the screen. If you have any questions, we are putting number on the screen for you to ask a question. I just gave you one. Plus two three four eight zero nine seven eight nine four thousand. Any question you ask, you have sent to that number. It will be answered. You are absolutely right, sir. Mercy P, daddy, the wife too have to be trusted. Yes. Husband and wife should trust each other. Marriage is built on trust. Marriage is built on trust. Wisdom is always profitable. Many must learn to give room for doubt. Assumption risk terribly. Okay. Okay. Daddy, how can I know more about the topic marriage? Patience or barrow on YouTube. Well said, Daddy. Some husband don't understand. We are in it already. God will help us. <laughs> I think every man should also work and build up his own career. We should not be jealous of each other. Husband and wife should not be jealous of each other. Or envious, I mean. Should not be envious of each other that we are rising in our career, in our calling, in our assignment. And we should celebrate each other. That we are making it, we are rising. And it's for the good of the family, like I have said. Okay, questions are already coming in. Situations are already coming in on Facebook, on YouTube. Please write in your situations, ask your questions, describe your situations on any area of life. There is no no go area here. All issues under the sun. Ask us whatever question and describe your issues. All right. Lisa Jalmet, lack of trust brings insecurity. Yes. Lack of trust brings insecurity. To Adimolu, read that this book on marriage. Yes, I think I have that marriage near me here again tonight. Let me show it. How can I know more about marriage? Obtain this book. Please put, put bookies number on the screen. That's the officer in charge of her publications. Every one of you send her a chat and say, give me the titles of all publications. Some of these books are on the internet and download for soft copy and but i always advise that you have a hard copy so that you can read you can color you can highlight you can give to somebody else to read and keep it so everybody obtain this book the singles the married parents grandparents everybody you need this book ministers to be able to counsel other people to know more about married topic all right
Okay, people are ready saying, guess daddy book on marriage. Marriage success secret. All right. Daddy, I am working, but things are not going well. I can't pay my house rent. And other family commitments can't be met. What should I do? Can you see? Money issue has come up now. I am working, but things are not going on well. I can't pay my house rent. And other family commitments are not met. What should I do? Now, good enough. This month in the Living Spring family is dedicated to preaching and teaching how a child of God should avoid poverty and prosper. We call it poverty is a choice. Get out of it. Prosperity is also a choice. Embrace it. Poverty is a choice. Get out of it. Prosperity is a choice. Embrace it. So please, I have delivered three messages already on that topic. You are the low rung of the ladder. You are not earning much. And you are not earning much because you are not bringing much to the table. The value you are adding is low. So improve on yourself, learn a trade, up your game. When your value increases, your earning will increase. And it does not matter how much you earn, you need to be an investor. You must start your investment journey early in life. No non-investor will be wealthy. I have taught that and I'm teaching it now. And then I have written a book. Good. I hope that book is also here. Oh, you need my book? This, Why Are People Poor? And Practical Solutions. How to go from poverty to prosperity. From little to something. From little to much. Everybody obtain this book also. Read. Apply. It will be okay. So this kind of story. I am working, but things are not working well. Can't pay my house rent. and can't meet family commitment. It's because you are earning low. There is nowhere laborers are paid much. It is the value you bring to the organization, to the workplace that the employers pay for. But the ultimate thing is that you become your own employer. You become your own boss. Everybody work towards that. We have spoken on that again and again and again and again. All right. You need to who said, look for a more better job. Yes, look for a better job, but you can only get a better job when you have value to add. What's your profession? What's your trade? What do you know how well to do? Like I said, it is the value you bring that people pay for. So please look for a better job and then be better qualified. Be better qualified. And produce essential goods and services. And God will bless you. And remember, money does not come from the altar of praying and fasting. It is when you are making contribution to life, you are adding value, you are meeting people's needs. People will pay for their needs met. Produce goods and services, they will pay. Add value to your employer, they will pay. All right? Everybody should be a professional. Don't be idle, don't be a laborer, don't be there complaining. Up your game, add value to yourself. The school of self development is where we never graduate. You just keep on increasing your knowledge, increasing yourself adding more, training more, adding more value, find bringing solution to issues, you will have money. Daddy, okay. are we blessed? Please, I need your contribution to to Ademolu well said, Daddy. Blessing, free bond. Yes, Daddy. I've seen a lot of questions being asked. I will delay that till next Friday. This is my first time of joining daddy from local Jakoti state. People are joining for the first time. All those joining us for the first time today, please indicate if you have not already done in uh, done that on Facebook, on YouTube, on Instagram and let only point global family on Facebook, on YouTube and Instagram welcome them. Look at me on Ojoko. Well said daddy. Blessing freeborn. Yes my daddy. That's on Facebook. Isabel Dube on YouTube. Yes, Daddy. Instagram, we need to do more on Instagram. Instagram, you need to do more. Facebook, you need to do more. YouTube, you need to do more. Share, 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 share. 
Let more people get to know these issues of life we are discussing. Let's deliver our people from ignorance, from exploitation. Shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. The truth we are sharing here will set anybody free. Financially, spiritually, maritally, ma mentally. Please, share, share, share. Let more people join and know this platform. Daddy, is it okay to take children for deliverance when it is called for? Taking children for deliverance when it is called for? Well, my approach to children is that we should catch them young. We should set them right for God early in life. And I have always preached on Proverbs 22, verse 6. Proverbs 22, verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go. When he grows, he will not depart from it. And I have always said, a child is a real child from day one or back to a seven of life. If from day one or back to a seven of life, you have received knowledge and understanding to set them in Christ, then you will not even be talking about deliverance for children. I know there are so many ministries that deliverance is their main message. Deliverance is their calling, as they say. I also am not too comfortable with that because deliverance is just an aspect of uh, the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said in Luke chapter 4, verse 18, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the gospel, to preach the good news to the poor, and healing to the sick, deliverance to the oppressed. So deliverance is just one. But there are many ministries and calling, they place the whole thing on deliverance. And so, in such an environment, it's talking like everybody must go through deliverance. So, is it okay to take children for deliverance? Are they possessed? Are they manifesting possession? So, if they are not possessed, if they are children of God, if they are growing in the Lord, if you have already set them up for Christ right from their infancy, so where is the room? Where, what is in them to be delivered from? Apart from sin that the blood of Jesus has saved us from and delivered us from. But I know of churches and ministry, everybody must go through deliverance because it is assumed that everybody is possessed, which is not okay, which is not the truth. Daddy, why do people talk to other people rather than the ones who offended them? Why do people talk to other people rather than to the ones who offended them? We have said this again and again. Jesus' teaching is, if you have issue with anybody, if your brother offends you, if your sister offends you, if your husband or your wife, he said, go to him or her all alone. You and him alone. You and her alone. In other words, talk directly to the person involved. He said, if you is able to agree and you settle amicably, that's the end of the matter. If not, and you still feel aggrieved, he said, take one or two persons along with you to be a witness. In the mouth of two or three witnesses, every truth shall be established. If despite that, he still said no, he said, involve the church. So those who talk to other people, rather than the people they claim offended them, are gossiping. That is throwing gossip. And that is also wrong. So, and I've told us, we have asked questions about forgiveness. How to forgive those who offended us. Forgive and forget. I have explained that. Human beings cannot forgive and forget. But human beings, having discussed with the person involved and issues resolved, you may remember, but there is no more hurt. It is that hurt thing that is a problem. So, the right thing to do is what Jesus has said. Go to that person, you and that person alone. Resolve the matter. If it is not resolvable, then get one or two witnesses. That is even within the brotherhood. Daddy, what can I do to help my male children to change their way of life and be Christ-like? Hmm. Can you see? A parent is crying out here. Parents, help us here. What can I do to help my male children to change their way of life and be Christ-like, just like what I have just said now. You win, you you catch them young. You win them in their infancy. Proverbs 22, verse 6. We cannot overstate it. But if they have grown up, they have had a mind of their own, and you now want to change them from their negative ways, 
to be like Christ, then you have to do more. Because they have grown, their character has been formed, they have been influenced, they have been lured, they've been distracted, they have gotten into wrong association and they already have a polluted mind, then they need salvation. The only way out is salvation. So which means warfare prayers, loving them, prayer, intense prayer, care for them, loving them, and sharing Christ. Sometimes sending some other people to preach to them. So that's the only way. But it is easier and cheaper if you have caught them young from their infancy. I have preached on Proverbs 22 verses again and again. Many of us are ignorant of the truth of that template. That is God's template. That is God's prescription. That is God's outline of how to win your children to God from infancy. Day one of life to age seven. When they get to age eight, age, 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 age nine, age ten, they become connected to their environment. And what could save the day is they are meeting Christ as their Lord and Savior. And that you don't determine that. Only God. But you can pray and trust God uh, for them to meet Christ. But then keep loving them and keep being good parent to them and spiritual warfare. Claiming them for Christ. Fasting along from time to time as God gives you the grace. Battle sit behind it so that the Lord Jesus by the Holy Ghost we are in their salvation. I don't know whether there are contributions. Patients are willing to say prayer, 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 prayer. If they are adults. Somebody say, yeah, we don't have to be possessed to go through deliverance. Well, I have said there are churches whose main messages are deliverance. I don't deny deliverance. But if there is nothing in me to be delivered from me from, so why do I? Well, if you take them through deliverance, what will come? What would they be delivered from? Our continual deliverance is different from the flesh, from carnality, growing to become more like Christ every day. But it's not that one demon is jumping out, and when the demon is not there, we are those which one will jump out. But when we are exposed and they are brought in a lot of demons, a lot of spirits there. And of course, the most sustainable deliverance is through the scripture. Warfare prayers. Filling your spirit and your mind with the scriptures. And then the darkness, the demonic influence and powers jumps out. All right. Uh, there is no end to talking about because like I said so many and some churches are just rigidly founded on deliverance everybody everyone carries a demon everyone carries a demon you are you are demonic until you prove otherwise until you go through the crucible of deliverance and our deliverance should be sustainable deliverance with the scriptures and with the spirit of God living to please God every day of our lives all right. Daddy, how can a couple who do not see things from the same perspective be helped? <laughs> we come back again to marriage. How can a couple who do not see things from the same perspective be helped? Please make contribution. Who is a victor says you cannot change an adult, only prayer can. Tutu Ademulu said you need to pray for them. Put back to see to back it up. Claim them for Christ. Continue it on it, it happens. Rosaline Amira Bakari. Good evening, Daddy. Well said, Daddy. Unsettling issues among brethren have the same issues. Okay? Please make your contributions. Let's hear you. Ademola Denito, foundation problem, Niao. 
that how can a couple who do not see things from the same perspective be helped? And there are many couples in this class, in this school. And that is why we teach and teach and teach. You find it in this book. Marriages that will have issues later, the signals and the signs will have been there. You are supposed to marry your friend. Who is a friend? A friend is somebody who you are fond of the same thing. You are tickled the same way. You see things almost the same way. Friends do disagree, but they cannot separate because there is an indefinable bond. There is an indefinable bond. They are on the same page. They have the same chemistry. They don't argue unendingly. Something about them simulates. They connect. And that is the kind of person you should marry. When people ask me, who should I marry? I say, marry your friend. So, but when you see couple who do not see things in the same perspective, they ought not to marry. Don't marry a person you argue with endlessly. You are calling it white, he's calling it black. You don't see things from the same way. You are both good, only that you are not wired the same way. So wait and search. Men should search, women should wait for a friend. Somebody you connect easily. You don't argue and argue, I don't see it that way, I'm not going that way. Everything is argument. When you are going out, which way to go, which car to use, which clothes to wear, you want to put children, your child in school, which school, it is all argument. You never see things the same way. You are not wired the same way. It's a problem. It's a foundational problem. Marry only your friend. And the older generations made this kind of, in fact, many times we spiritualize it. We thought if people are born again and they have Jesus, everything is okay. No. That you are both born again does not mean you are wired the same way. Somebody already quoted Abiodu Makonjuola on Facebook has already quoted Amos chapter 3, verse 3. Amos 3 3. And two work together except they be agreed. The foundation of many problems, many problems, is that they never agree. They are not meant to live together. They are not meant to be husband and wife. Wait for your own friend and search for your own friend in the Lord. So how do you settle issues? People don't see things the same perspective. It's prayer. That God will let one of them come down and agree. There are those who just have to bear. Marriage is supposed to be enjoyed. Many people are enduring their own. Because they did not have this kind of understanding before they said I do. To the person they said I do to. So please marry your friend. And character... It's like pregnancy. It cannot be hidden for long. I'm currently teaching that now. Teaching that on radio. Those of you that are in and around the but I'm currently teaching that. You will hear me teach that. Things to avoid. Signs that when you see, say, I ah, know. This is not the man I should marry. This is not the woman. It's not just the beauty. It's not just the figure. It's the character. It's the person. All right? Daddy, okay, I don't know what people are saying. Fasuru Adeola, how are you? He said, Mary, many married wrongly and ignorantly. That is the truth. That is the truth. Agnes, Gia, Oyetunji, where there is mutual respect and understanding. Mm. Bright, Ulu Abukola, what of people have already, if you have already married, you are already married. Then you need patience. It's a cross. You know, carry your cross and trust God and engage warfare prayers and also change. The easiest way to change an adult is to change towards him. So why? Change towards your husband. Husband, change towards your wife. Have patience for each other. Even where people are wired the same way, like I said, friends do disagree, but it doesn't last long. Because what bonded them together is stronger than what is separating them. They can't do without each other. That's how you know who is your friend. You can't do without each other. You see husband and wife disagree for one week, for one month. They are not talking. They are not eating. They are not sleeping together. They are not going to... I mean, those are not friends. Friends can't do without each other. So if they disagree, they will find, quickly find a way of settling because they can't do without each other. They are bonded together. It's mysterious. 
Love is mysterious. They, they, they feel for each other. They want each other. They are happy in the company of each other. There are husband and wife that are happier when they are not together. When the other one is away, the, the one is happy. When the husband travels, the woman is happy. When the husband returns, oh. There are husbands that are themselves when they are away. But when they return back to their home, oh, no, it shouldn't be. Unfortunately, that is what you see in many places. Me and they and they only. So if you have already married him, you have already married her, then you just need God's grace. Are you Jenny? Are you just coming in? In addition to the prayer dimension that he mentioned, look for a mentor you can both submit to to help you when issues are difficult. Yes, that's another way. A mentor. Somebody, and unfortunately, there are husband and wife that have no common mentor. There are men that don't even have mentor. They are machines a deck. They are themselves. And that's, those are dangerous men to marry. Somebody that you have nobody to report him to. They don't have any pastor they respect. They don't have any mentor. Especially when they have some little coins. Or a good job. Uh, it's, 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 it has no end. So please make sure you marry well. Daddy, with the current issue of pastors' prophecies concerning politics not coming to pass, is it not wise for pastors to stay clear from politics, sir? <laughs> wow! Adela, do you hear that? With the current issue of pastors prophesying concerning politics and the prophecies are not coming to pass, is it not wise for pastors to stay clear from politics? Wow! Nigeria pastors for you. Ah, it is laughable. It is, it is embarrassing. If I it got to a ridiculous level, this is our ongoing election. Before the presidential election, many pastors in Nigeria, as well as the Pentecostals and the CAC brand, the Aladura brand, and the Pentecostals, they just turn into prophets. Everybody prophesying, same vision on who will win the presidential tickets from the mainline political parties. You will hear God told me. One said, I checked from God three times. One said, look, if the, look, I know how God talked to me. If, if this person win, then I will stop being pastor. Then don't call me pastor. And the person did not win. <laughs> Many said, God has showed them that there will be no election. And election took place. All kinds of permutations. Even now, there are those that are still saying, the winner of the election is not the winner. He's still going to be taking the winner. I said, what kind of all this? Oh, ridiculous. Ridiculous. They just brought shame. Shame to ministry. That's what I would say. God told me. My father told me. I've never missed it. My father told me. Once said, God said I will be the president. And he didn't win one vote. I mean, sometimes you just say, what is all this? They brought ridiculous shame, embarrassment to pastoring, to the kingdom. Discouraging many people. If I, there are many people who never would believe any pastor for anything. What can you say God told you what, you what you don't know anything about? Politics that you don't know anything about. And can I say to us, I'm still going to, I'm still going, I just want this, this election, election period to go down. Next Saturday, we are going for governor, this Saturday, governorship and the state houses of assembly. I just want it to go down. The way pastors, mainline pastors, non-pastors, coming up to say God told me, Three times I asked him, I never failed. My father don't lie to me. And they are they are gambling. We just have gamblers. Everybody seeing vision. Oh, it's unfortunate. And can I say this? Prophecy or prophesying is not for determining which team wins in a soccer event or which presidential candidate win in a presidential race. That is not what vision is meant for. That is not what prophesying is meant for. We have to do that in the Bible. Prophesying is for edification. Can I get my Bible so I can read a verse to you? First Corinthians 14. Oh, I still just I just want this to go down. 
People are talking what they don't know anything about. What they don't know, any, they don't know anything about politics. They don't know anything about political situation in Nigeria. So they've never been there. Why don't you stay on your pulpit and preach the gospel that God gave you and build up your congregation? Must you act as a prophet? Must you come and say, God told me when God never told you anything? You just make the whole thing ridiculous and laughable. Sometimes I'm so much ashamed. And there are some social media people, you know, they, I, I watch one. He gathered all the pastors that claimed that God told them and they were giving who will win the presidency. And all the prophecies went haywire, overboard. <laughs> and he put all of them together. You, lead, you are just ashamed. First Corinthians 14, verse 4. He said, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edified himself, but he that prophesied edified the church. Prophesying is to edify the church, build the church, mature the church. It's not for saying which team we win in a soccer event or which presidential candidate we win. That is not. Did you read that in the Bible? Did Jesus did that? Any of the apostles? Where did we get all this nonsense? And if you say God said, the Bible says, any prophet that says a thing and it comes to pass, we know God told him. Whoever says God said and it did not come to pass, God did not tell him. So if all these pastors are coming up to say somebody, God said, this one will win. A lot of people prophesy that the current president will die and the, the vice president will come. The president did not die, he's still alive. Where did you see all these things from? Just ridiculing Christianity. Well, uh, they just turn the whole thing to comedy. So say a gamblers, permutation, palm three from five. <laughs> Full stakers mentality on the pulpit. Pentecostalism is unbelievable. You know, in Pentecostalism, nobody calls the other person to order. And sometimes when these pastors are on their pulpit, they, they, they have this mentality of they are talking to the whole world. For goodness sake, there are over 200 million Nigerians. How many people are before you in your congregation? 1,000, 5,000, 10,000, 50,000, compared with 200 million. Even many people in your congregation don't believe them. Many of their congregation members don't even believe them. And this is how we lure people into trouble. We say God said when God did not say anything. It's unfortunate. So, what are you asking me? Will pastors not stay clear from politics. I don't tell them oh. By the grace of God, I have been into politics. I have been into the crucible of Nigerian politics. And I was telling somebody today, the whole PFM, Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria, said, Femi Manuel, please, you have been into politics. Come and guide the church. But they will not even take to guidance. They will not even listen. Everybody is hearing from God. Everybody is a prophet. God told me. God told me. One God will be telling 10 people different things. They never resemble each other. And it is the same God. Wow. Anyway, you know, like I have said, the greatest strength of the Pentecostals is, has become their weakest point, the Holy Spirit. Everybody is claiming the Holy Spirit told me. The Holy Spirit told me. And the Lord help his church and help Nigeria. In fact, the church fared badly. This is the worst season for the church. In Nigerian political setting, this is the worst season for the church. I was, I, I called one big PFM officer today. I said, why is it that the PFM has not congratulated the president-elect of the APC? Why is it that Khan has not? And he was laughing, said, well, everybody is confused. Everybody is confused because everybody said that's not the one that will win. I don't want to go into that. And even now, many people are still saying, no, God still said is not the one. God still said. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know which God. And only God talked to Nigerian pastors. So, me, I don't know. The thing don't tire me. <laughs> the thing don't tire me. Everybody is hearing from God. And we are hearing different things, saying it different ways. Look, I can tell you where this Saturday's election will go in some states. In our state, for instance, in Lagos. I can tell you, not because God told me, not because I have a vision, not because I have a dream, but I have been into politics. I know the dynamics of Nigerian politics. So I can tell you, based on these facts and truths and setting, 
This is the way it will go. Not that God told me. Not that I, I dreamt. Not that Holy Ghost woke me up. Oh, no. You have not been into anything. He said that which we have seen. That which we have had. That which our heart has handled. You don't have experience in anything. And when it comes to politics, Nigerian church is a dummy. Totally ignorant and illiterate. And now these whole people now go out. God told me. God told me. I mean, they're the Pentecostals. It's a shame. I wonder how people will still go and listen to that kind of a pastor who came and said, God said, and what he said, God said, did not come to pass. He said, God said, there will be no election. Election had been held. There will be election next Saturday, this Saturday. God said, there will be no election. God said, there will be this one will not win. God said, this is the one we will win. I had him. I cross check. He told me. Ah. Well, let's be praying for Nigerian church. Let's be praying for the church of God in Nigeria. Right, the Pentecostals. The can, the PFN, let's be praying. I spoke, I spoke, camp people came to meet me, gather all the leaders of PFN. You asked me to give you guidance. I'm giving you guidance. You are not listening. Everybody is saying, God called me. God will help us. Daddy, what? Okay. Let's take one more. Our time is going. Okay, well, let me hear what are people saying. You got that one? <laughs> Ah, oh yes, Omar, just laughing. Are you sure that Pentecostals? Olufunke Ahmed, they will be, they were lying against the Holy Spirit. Yes, pure lie. Upon the Bolaji, they are always confused. They turn prophecy to bed Niger. <laughs> Fools better. Palm three from five. <laughs> wow, to the devil, you just laughing. At the allow journey, the problem with a lot of pastors was that they desire a thing and think they can force it on God. God is just, just and faithful. A lot slip into soothsaying. Anything that does not bring glory to God is flesh, total flesh. Big, big pastors, because they have congregation. Some are even cursing, some are even inciting people. Ah! inciting people against the couple like, and if if you put fire on nigeria everybody will burn can you say god said and what god said did not come to pass and you are still insisting god said ego pride ignorance true to a devil it is an internet explosion to get notice god knows who worship him May God help Nigeria. My, my concern is that these kind of pastors, they preach to congregation. What are they preaching to them? They keep saying, God said, God said, on different areas of life. What, where, where is that God that tells them what does not come to pass? Ah. Sometimes they just make you ashamed answering the name pastor. Well, Ishola said, Zalamatala Yahoo pastors. Magdalene, some pastors even said they will jack back. <laughs> oh, there is nothing where man not go here in this Nigeria. Puffy baby, I love my daddy. <laughs> Chima Judith, politics is by God's grace, not prophecy. <laughs> James, Papa, sorry to say. Most churches in Nigeria are fake. Many of them are Yahoo, Yahoo, men of God. Uh, uh, don't abuse us now. <laughs> My God. Anyway, God knows those that are serving him. God knows those that he has called. Everybody is doing it. You know, in Nigeria, usually among us Pentecostals, no discipline, no leader, no, no code of ethics. Everybody is doing what he likes. And that is what is bringing the church into the disrepute. How can a government you prophesy against, a government you fought and fought, and, and how can how can it, how can it? And I told them, next to God's power is political power. How can that government be friendly with you? How would that government not make laws that will curtail you, that will hold you, that will, and, and anyway? Let's just trust God. The church has never had it this bad. And we are divided. 
the church of God in Nigeria had never had it this bad. And I, I warned them. I was at uh, Bayesa years ago, and I told them, please don't. The church should never make the mistake of pitching tents behind a political candidate. You should not. We are supposed to be the father of all. Even when you know, you keep it. I knew how, how the, the, the election will go. I've been there. The first election I contested for was world chairmanship. So I know the power of grassroots. I know the power of network. But you just brought religion into it. You brought ethnicity into it. I, I just wonder what will become of Nigerian church, the Pentecostals, in the years ahead. I just, I just, and even now people are still saying the winner is not the winner. The winner is not the winner. We will all live to see. After Saturday, after Supreme Court judgment, we will know where we are going. All right? God bless you. Daddy, how can my son be free from bad friends? We have said something along that tonight. How can my son be free from bad friends? Prayer, warfare prayers, fasting for him, loving him, because you lost him at the infancy. Train up a child in the way he should go. The one of battle is seven of life. I keep repeating. But if you miss that, then prayer. There's nothing God cannot do. There's nothing prayer cannot conquer. So warfare prayers, Google, bring out Bible verses to claim back your son. Love him, show him love, and be praying and trust the Holy Ghost to give him an encounter that he will be born again. I think uh, that is where we will stop tonight. Uh, Evo, Evo, Rosemary, absolutely true, Daddy. Amen. Amen. All right. Proud of you, Daddy. Oyani Daniel. God bless you. I'm proud of all of you too. Mercy people in washing people. A lot of people are tired of church. A lot of people are tired of Nigerian church. And it's not only in Nigeria, in London, in UK, in Europe, in America, just doing uh, become one enterprise. Everybody's just doing his own internet relevance and all the rest of it. Once they have the two money, sizable congregation, they are on the media, they are on top of the world. Well, I know God, the owner of the church, is watching his church, he will help his church, he will, he will, he will, he knows what to do, know what to do. Please be praying for us. This Saturday is the governorship and the houses of assemblies election. We want an atmosphere of peace. We want after the election to be able to go on with our job. We have enough problems with this uh, Naira hijack, emifilism. <laughs> I've never seen a place where I want the president, the central bank governor, the uh, law officer of the nation. I'm a young body, but I know that it's temporary. It will go. Nigerians have patience. Have patience. This crisis, Naira crisis will go. Yeah, you have your money in the bank and you cannot assess it. Uh, cashless society is a good policy, but the implementation and the procedure is wrong. God will help us. We will come out of it and we'll come out of many, many issues. The church will also come out of this crisis of Holy Ghost told me, Holy Ghost told me, everybody has become prophet and soothsayer. Don't forget what I said tonight prophesying and receiving vision from God is not about which team wins in a soccer event. It's not about which presidential candidate will win an election. That is not what prophesying or vision is all about. No, it's for building the church, edifying the church. Anyone that goes into prophecy, vision, is abusing sacred issue. It's abusing the scripture, it's bringing confusion and it's in error. Well, God bless you. Let me pray for us as we go tonight. May the glory of God rest upon everyone. If you are sick in any part of your body, touch that place. There is a healing power. The Lord heals you. The glory of God rests on you. If anybody is in problem, you are owing, you have no job, you have problem with your state paper, work permit, 
indefinite state citizenship with promotion this crisis and tension we are going through in nigeria god will make a way for you he says the light shines in darkness we pray for our uh, current uh, election as we go for the governorship and the houses of assembly on saturday lord let there be peace let your will be done in nigeria forgive your church and forgive your servants for misleading and misdirecting say you said when you didn't say anything lord have mercy upon the church have mercy upon the nation have mercy upon your people thank you father every one of you receive god's touch receive god's miracle go to your bed in peace wake up in peace those of you that watch later the glory and the peace of god will be on you every morning wake up with your turning point if the network is not making it to deliver on time stay on it switch up your cell phone put it on again the network must have come back the lord bless you the lord lift you in the name of jesus i love you i bless god for you bye